All right, so my name is Garen Parry. I'm a lecturer in plant science and genetics and uh, cell biology up at the uh, University of Liverpool. And we have great problems uh, getting students to be interested in plant science. So we want to try and educate you a little bit today about 10 interesting things about, uh, about plant science. So, so plants have no cancer. They don't have HIV. They don't have flu. As plant biologists, we have to think a little bigger, right? We have to think about like feeding the world or healing the world like Michael Jackson or, or Bob Geldof did. So these are the things we think about. So how can we do this? We can alter plants so they are more drought resistant. They have higher yield, for example, um, or they're more resistant to pests. So how do we do this? So there's two broad strategies I want to talk about initially. So initially there is plant breeding. So plant breeding is this historical way of altering the way uh, plants grow. Um, it's really slow because you have to go through all the g different generations. The most classic example of this is going from this teosinti, which is a basically an edible grain, to corn just through by multiple, multiple generations. So the other way we can do it is through genetic modification. So I work on that weed right in the middle called the Rabidopsis. So we work on a Rabidopsis, work out um, how the DNA works, how the cells work in, in plants, and then we can use that uh, information to go to maize, to soybean, to wheat, to potatoes. So the way we do with genetic modification, so then we, we alter the, we put new genes into these, into these plants and change the way they act. So this is much faster than breeding. It's obviously much more controversial than breeding. Uh, and and, in, and it, it might very well be the future. So this is the very first genetically modified organism. So the, a key concept in, uh, that we want to think about is food security. So this is the ability to feed everyone in a, in a reasonable and sustainable manner. We know that the uh, world population is going up really, really quickly. And Plant science is going to be a key way of being able to feed, uh, feed everyone. So this happened back in the 60s. So the Green Revolution, um, basically we produced uh, a strain of rice which enabled us to feed a lot more people in, in Africa and Southeast Asia. So through, through plant breeding, there was short, uh, much shorter rice which had a high yield. And this was a, this was a great success. It, in, in recent times, there's this new rice which is called golden rice. So basically you put a bacterial gene into rice, turns them yellow, but you get beta carotene in there. And this enables people to have vitamin A where they might not usually get it in their diet. So this is going through the process of getting, uh, 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 being uh, uh, allowed to be used. So this is, uh, this is an example uh, slightly more controversial. So 80% of the corn and soybean in the U.S. is, is genetically modified. And this has some um, ethical issues since it's a, it's a big business thing, big Monsanto and, uh, and other companies. So, so let's talk about the future. So how are we going to use plant science? So one thing is preventing and managing disease. So this fungus, wheat rust fungus, uh, basically gets on the stems of, uh, of wheat and, and basically com 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 completely um, wipe out a yeast. Uh, a wheat um, stock, so that's obviously not very good. So this, uh, this developed in, in uh, the late 90s in Africa. Now it's moved up to Iran and it's going towards uh, India and China, basically the bread basket, the wheat bread basket. So millions and millions of people uh, are, are going to be affected by this. So what can we do about this? So we can breed uh, resistant varieties of wheat. This is successful, but, but it's slow. We can create genetically modified wheat. This is faster, but obviously more controversial. But is this possible? Is this a real way to manage it? So as an aside, let me introduce to you the papaya ring sprout virus. So this was a real problem in Hawaii uh, a couple of decades ago. And we made a genetically modified version of papaya, which is basically resistant to this virus. And we introduced this to uh, Hawaii, and, and, and uh, none of the papaya died. So it really, it really worked out really well. So back to advertising the University of Liverpool. So we uh, have, a, have a great role in the uh, sequencing of the wheat genome. So basically, we're trying to work out what all the DNA is in, in, uh, in wheat. And getting this information will enable us to improve growth uh, and also uh, you know, improve pathogen resistance. Another thing about plants is fueling the planet. So we can replace the use of fossil foods with plant-derived materials. So this is for energy supply and also for fuels. Um, this is carbon neutral, so plants take in CO2, and then when you burn it, you just give the CO2 back. One example of this, Miscanthus gigantus. So this is a grass, which is huge, obviously. So it's easy to grow. It's non-invasive. So you can cut this down, and you can burn it. So there's loads of research going on uh, into how we can use this as a biofuel uh, and, and to make energy. So what about plant-derived medicines, finally? So there's undiscovered cures for multitude of illnesses out there. One example being Taxol. So this is an effective anti-cancer drug, which randomly came from uh, the bark of yew trees. And finally, what about Galanthamine. So this is, a, uh, this is a molecule which is, uh, which is from uh, the bulbs of daffodils. So we do some research on this in, in Liverpool, and, and it's used to, as an effective uh, treatment for Alzheimer's disease. So this is something we're, we're working on now, and obviously something which is gonna, also going to come out of plants. So thanks for listening. Uh, lots of questions, maybe some answers. If you have anything to, to ask me about, check out my website where it talks about my research, which has nothing to do with what I mentioned today, and then my, my new Twitter feed as well. So thank you.